Okay, we're back. This is John Furrier from uh, SiliconAngle.com, CloudAngle.com, and SiliconAngle.tv at our new studio, The Cube. Inside The Cube right now at the Cloudera headquarters is uh, Amr Awadala, the co-founder of Cloudera. Take it away. Okay, so first I would like each one of you guys to uh, briefly introduce yourself, uh, tell us your name, what you do at Cloudera, and maybe something fun about uh, how you joined the company or uh, about yourself in general. So Charles, you want to go first? Sure. Hi, my name is Charles, and I'm responsible for product management at Cloudera. Um, came here by way of SAP. Um, uh, let's see, fun story about how I got here is uh, uh, Jeff Hammerbacher found me on Quora. Uh, <laughs> that's how I came to Cloudera. So that's par for the course for, for this company. So there you go, guys. A strong tip for you to join Cloudera <laughs> is to use Quora. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, my name is Chad Metcalf. I'm an uh, engineer at Cloudera, and I'm responsible for uh, build, test, and release. Uh, I was recruited by, by another engineer here uh, from uh, a company that, that Mike Olson went to graduate school with the VP of engineering, uh, kind of proving that it's just a really small world in the valley. Uh, my name's Eli Collins. I'm an engineer here. Um, I also came uh, via um, Jeff. He invited me to give a talk on some some work I was doing at VMware, where I was for four and a half years before I came here, and um, just really uh, hit it off with the team. Really liked the management where the company was going, and I've been here uh, about a year since. So th there you go. Another trend here is Jeff Hammerbecker, uh, one of the co-founders, is a very uh, uh, good way to come in into Cloudera. He hangs on Cora a lot, as uh, Charles said. So that's where you can find him. Uh, okay, so the first question uh, would go to Charles. And Charles, I would like you to tell us uh, how does Cloudera make money? You guys have this Apache Hadoop software, which is open source and free. So how do you make money? Sure. So uh, I mean, a couple of things I'd say about that. So we have we have two products as a company. We have a distribution for Hadoop, and then we also have a commercial offering. So even our distribution for Hadoop is a pretty significant step up over. Uh, what um, any person or organization would get if they were to go to Apache Hadoop. So we make something that is, uh, uh, integrates a lot more components, it's kind of functionally richer, uh, it's uh, 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 integrated, tested, easier to consume. Um, so even our distribution is kind of a step up over um, what you would do if you were to sit down and load Apache. But on top of that, you know, the kind of customers that we're serving, uh, you know, companies like uh, Visa, uh, eBay, Bank of America, you know, having, having some bits is not really uh, what they're looking for. You know, they're looking to take this platform and apply it to all kinds of different use cases and business problems. And in order to operationalize that, they need a lot of other things. And we have a commercial offering. It's a combination of uh, support and also proprietary software that we offer. And um, companies like this tend to find it, you know, pretty compelling to, to run Hadoop and, you know, production use cases. So you, you guys have some event coming up uh, that m we might hear from companies? We have Hadoop World. Uh, <laughs> Hadoop World on October 12th uh, in uh, New York City. Uh, we've got five tracks running during the course of the day. I think total more like 30, 35 different uh, presentations and panels ranging from uh, kind of uh, traditional enterprise to new world web to academic to, you know, vendor stories, um, user stories, it should be a, a really good experience. So if you were to, were to say briefly, what's the main value proposition of what Cloudera provides? Like why would I as a business buyer in a big bank like Visa or whatever, wh why do I need Cloudera? What's it yeah, useful for? Uh, you know, the, um, the way we kind of describe it is that, uh, you know, typically what happens is people read about Hadoop. Uh, they say, okay, I want to try it. Well, that's easy to do. You can go to uh, our, uh, downloads at cloudera.com and you can try it. And then they wind up uh, using it for kind of a project, a single use case uh, of some kind. And then, oh my God, it works. It's actually, you know, it's as flexible or as affordable or as scalable as uh, uh, I was told. And then they want to run it in production. And uh, that's where our principal benefit is. We help companies run Hadoop in production. And that's a combination of proprietary software that we've developed as well as uh, the team that supports this open source distribution that we've worked on for the, for the past years. Right. Thank you very much. So the next question is for Eli. And this question, Eli, is about uh, what do Cloudera engineers do uh, every day? What are they building? What problems are they trying to solve? So uh, Amr, at a high level, what we're trying to do is build out what we think is a future for data storage and analysis. Um, and we're, as, as uh, 
we've talked about before, Hadoop is a great starting point for that. Um, in the platform team, we have Hadoop, and then we have seven or eight other projects, uh, many of which uh, Cloudera created to kind of basically bring that future to existing companies. So people who see that, that core that's there, and then they have a bunch of other problems that they need to solve um, in order to make that reality. So you know whether it's working on a distributed system to get data in and out of Hadoop in a reliable, high-performance way, or it's a single kind of compelling pane of glass that lets you look at a thousand cluster servers and know what's going on. Um, basically, any of the uh, we attack all the problems that are required for making that uh, that vision happen. So, so if you can give me some examples of projects that uh, Cloudera has contributed to. I mean, we know that MapReduce and the Hadoop distributed file system that uh, Yahoo and Facebook, they did a lot of the contributions, most of the contributions actually in these projects. What are some projects that uh, Yahoo, uh, that sorry, Cloudera has contributed? Well, yeah, so we, um, like you mentioned, we collaborate with Yahoo and Facebook and others on core Hadoop. So I've, you know, done some work on the distributed file system, Doug and uh, Tom and Todd and plenty of other people contribute to those core projects. But we also have some projects that we've enti created entirely ourselves. Um, one of those uh, is Flume, which is this, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, a system that's uh, distributed, available uh, in a reliable way to get a large amount of data in and out uh, of a system. So some of our customers have, you know, five petabyte cluster, thousands of servers. Uh, you can't just run a simple cron job to load data in and, and get it out. Uh, that was a really interesting system. Uh, some of our guys, uh, um, who uh, uh, here uh, built and developed that uh, system from scratch. Um, we've got another interesting uh, uh, project called Hue, which is also something that Cloudera developed uh, entirely on its own, and that's uh, short for Hadoop User Interface, and that's an SDK for writing uh, high-level applications uh, that run on Hadoop. So if you want to write an application to monitor a particular application, uh, you can do that in a, you know, an environment that gives you windowing and components that let you integrate with the rest of the Hadoop ecosystem in terms of like looking at files and databases and that sort of stuff. So those are two very different kind of projects that we created uh, in this ecosystem. And, and these are open source projects or proprietary? Yes, both, uh, both of these are open source projects. So 100% of our platform is Apache uh, licensed um, open source. Um, and then as uh, Charles mentioned, we have a bunch of proprietary products that we do on top of that. These two projects uh, are open source, yes. And you can find them on, on GitHub. Uh, you can find them on GitHub and uh, github.com slash Cloudera. Uh, so the next question to you, Eli, still is, uh, it's really two parts. First, if I'm an engineer, uh, why would I want to come work here? And mm -hmm. then second, what type of skills are you looking for right now? Uh, so I, I think the easiest way for me to answer that is why I wanted to work here. So I think in general, most people, uh, most engineers I think are attracted by interesting problems and teams they want to work with. So uh, we have a lot of, there's, you know, this is a very, uh, this is a very nascent technology. Uh, you know, what we're building we believe is the future of data storage and analysis and there's a ton of uh, really interesting problems that have to be solved uh, many years worth uh, to make our dream reality. Uh, so I think, you know, A, there's a lot of interesting problems. B, uh, it's a really strong engineering team. Uh, you know, when I was coming, I was looking for, you know, a company that wasn't just trying to build like a widget for a website or whatnot. We were trying to look for somebody, you know, I was looking for a company that could like attack a really meaty problem that had a, you know, impact on, uh, on uh, you know real users, so you know if someone like Visa is using our software to do fraud detection, or eBay is you know completely doing a bunch of uh, new infrastructure on our work. Uh, it's really you know having an impact uh, that's kind of uh, larger than uh, the normal is another thing that I think is really attractive to engineers. That's, that's very very good. In other words, uh, working on stuff that make it makes a difference yeah. in the world. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a very very uh, very good point. Uh, so what skills are you looking for in the engineers that uh, are coming to work here? Um, so at a high level, I look for people who are passionate about software and systems and data. I think if you, you know, that's, that's tend to be a, a pretty good uh, um, kind of first pass at whether someone will be a good fit. Um, we don't really hire for specific languages or frameworks. We look for kind of great engineers who can get stuff done. Um, and a lot of them, you know, whether that's previous experience at other companies where they've done a lot of impressive work there or they're just coming out of school and have shown uh, just a lot of promise during the interview, um, you know, we see that, that that ends up being materialized in a number of ways. We have, uh, you know, all sorts of backgrounds on our on our team from experienced open source people, people like me who are at VMware for five years, you know, hacking and seeing assembly. So there's there's all sorts of, of backgrounds. So I think the, the common thread is that we're looking for kind of great engineers who uh, have a really good taste in the type of problems they attack and work with customers and uh, just want to write software that gets, you know, that solves makes real use and makes a difference and solves real people's problems. Cool. Very, very, very good. So maybe Charles, can I give you a mic to uh, Chad because sure. we have a couple of questions for him. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so Chad, I heard that your uh, group internally at Cloudera is called Kitchen. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I wish, just, I wish it was because I would like to be a chef and one day work <laughs> in a kitchen, but that's not the case. Um, Actually, you, you are a good chef, aren't you? I am a good chef, and I, I have worked in kitchens, uh, and I, I now work in the kitchen. So uh, when I first started here, I sat down with Jeff Hammerbacher, and we talked a little bit about this team that we wanted to develop, and we knew roughly what we wanted to do. And so... Uh, Someone once asked a, a Google employee, why is Google so successful? And he said, it's because our kitchen is better. And what he meant by that was that the, the infrastructure and the environment in which that they do their development is so much stronger, and they've put so much time and investment into it, that, that that's really what helps them succeed and uh, kind of differentiate themselves. And so Jeff wanted something like that. And so we, we decided to, to go ahead and form this team called Kitchen. And Kitchen is really just uh, a core set of engineers who are dedicated to uh, really the hard problems of building, testing, and releasing software at this scale. Like, when you think about it, like, CDH is, is you know... Sorry, what, what is CDH? CDH is uh, Cloudera's distribution for Hadoop. Um, so it's actually not just Hadoop, right? It's the entire ecosystem that sits around Hadoop. So we're talking almost a dozen projects. Um, each of them have various build systems, they all have unique test systems, they all have basically their own personalities, and now you want to build those, you want to be able to test them, you want to be able to test them together as an integrated whole, and you want to release that. You know, that's, that's a non-trivial problem. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff there. There's yeah. a lot of cooking that goes there. There's <laughs> a lot of, th yeah, there's a lot of cooking that goes into it. And so, um, this is what the, the kitchen's really about, is, is you know, putting together, building, testing, and releasing enterprise software, mm -hmm. and realizing that it's a hard problem. It's more than just turning a crank, right? There has, there's some hard problems and thought that has to go into that. So, so uh, in, in Kitchen, do you guys just use custom software, or you guys build software as well? And what are examples of some software you're using right now? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, I think a lot of companies run this risk of uh, you know, trying to be Google and building all their own infrastructure, and that's not that's not the, the approach we take here. We do, because we are an open source company, we do look for open source tools that fill needs. And if we can't find one, then, we leverage ex then we'll leverage existing frameworks to get where we need to go. And let me give you a couple examples. So um, for testing, we use Hudson as kind of our continuous integration server. Um, right now we have a Hudson server running with uh, 10 nodes, over 70 projects. You know, it's continuously running a, a huge suite of tests for various projects, be it unit tests or integration tests or spinning up EC2 clusters to, you know, test Hadoop uh, packaging tests. Different um, versions of operating systems. Different versions of operating systems using various open source tools to kind of look at the code quality, like uh, J. Carter and Finebugs and Check Style. And really, uh, you know, we leverage all of those. And then uh, for some cases where, you know, there's not a system that really does this, you know, there's no system that takes all the Apache projects and builds them magically for you, right? So uh, we went ahead and, and rolled our own, but we started by leveraging some really uh, important open source tools, like we use uh, Botto, which is a Python binding for Amazon. Uh, we use that to kind of spin up Amazon clusters where we do all of our builds. We use S3 to kind of, uh, one, hold our, our source artifacts, and we actually use it to, to hold our, our binaries after everything was built. Um, so, you know, we, uh, everyone in Kitchen writes software. It's not, you know, not your typical release where it's just, you know, you push a button, you wait, you package up some software, and you throw it on a, a website. You know, everyone on the Kitchen team writes software. Everyone really uh, believes and buys in on the open source kind of community. We all, you know, work on various projects and, and contribute back to those. So basically, we're just engineers on a slightly different non-release product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what type of, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, I mean, one, just to share the, like the en another engineer's perspective on Kitchen as someone who largely consumes the, the work they do. Um, you know, it's important, uh, it's important that you have a team devoted, uh, you know, to quality, that, that you're, the, you know, putting out a quality product is really important to engineers, and it's important that we devote people uh, uh, to that. And the other thing is that there's a lot of interesting problems in these kind of large-scale systems that uh, existing ways of testing and building software just fall down. Uh, and you really need a fresh look and a really hard 
hardcore attack at those types of problems. So, you know, having a team of people who get to focus on that so that uh, other people, you know, for instance, if you're working on a change to the file system and someone's already written all this automation that will fire up a cluster on six nodes and let you start writing your software and you don't have to worry about those other things, uh, really means that other engineers can be more effective. So, so they both tack some interesting problems, you know, in terms of quality and scale and whatnot, but they also really allow a lot of other people to kind of get their job done without having to get bogged down with a lot of um, things they don't want to get distracted by. Very good point. So Chad, what type of skills are you looking for uh, in the kitchen? Um, I think the, the most important thing that we're looking for in kitchen are engineers. Um, we, need, we want people who can, who write software and who are interested in approaching kind of non-traditional engineering problems, right? So uh, being able to look at a build system and see the very challenging sort of like hard problems there, that's, that's what we want. Like, uh, we don't, you know, if, you're, if you look at a build system and think it's boring, mundane, kitchen's not gonna be the place for you. But if you can see like, uh, you know, we build for four different flavors of Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat, you know, 32 and 64 bit, and you can see that this is actually a hard problem, right? With a lot of dependencies. A lot of dependencies, a lot of different third party software. You know, how do you, how do you build these and how do you test them? Um, we also are responsible for maintaining the clusters here at Cloudera. We have a development cluster, we have a CDH uh, long live cluster, we have a CDH with security cluster, we have a dog food cluster where we run CDH to kind of analyze our own, pro our own logs, our own data. Um, so if you're interested in, in writing software that kind of helps maintain and monitor those that actually ends up being fed back into the, the various apps teams that, that do this kind of thing for Hadoop clusters, you know, this is, uh, these are the kinds of skills we want. And in the end, we're, we're just an engineering team. Yeah, but beyond being an engineering team, you frequently would tell me that it takes a special type of person like yourself yeah. to be in the kitchen. What's the special extra thing that uh, a kitchen engineer needs to have? It's not just technical talents, it's more like the way they approach their, how they do their job. Um, Sorry if I'm putting you on the spot. No worries. <laughs> so <laughs> That's what he told me. Kitchen people, <laughs> uh, uh, so there's, there's two different kinds of kitchen people, I'd say. They're, the, they're kind of more the operational sides of people who are going to work on the, uh, the automation and spinning up the clusters. And for those kind of people, the kind of the, the, the more DevOpsy sort of attitudes are really what we're looking for. People that are, uh, uh, enjoy coding are, are kind of detailed focused, uh, don't want to keep doing manual tasks all the time uh, is really important. And then the other side of it is, the, is definitely in my background is more the, the QA approach. Um, and not people who look at QA as a black box, right? Like just check that they put an input in and get an output out. Like mm -hmm. people who actually want to know what's in the box mm -hmm. and kind of understand how they can potentially break the box. <laughs> you know? um, those, are the, those are really the, the, two kind of, the two kind of people that, that we look for when we find people in kitchen. Cool, thanks. Okay, so, so back to Charles, if you can get him the mic. Sure. Uh, so, so first, Charles, tell us about what's the product uh, development methodology slash process that you use here at Cloudera. Sure. So, uh, as I mentioned, we've got we've got two products, and so at the moment we have two teams. We've sort of changed that up based on you know what we're building at any given time. Our our emphasis is on on an agile process and with a lowercase a, right? We don't have a lot of people with uh, Scrum manuals lying around, uh, you know. But but um, I think the common sense part is that we want to build iteratively, we want to ship often, and uh, we want to get feedback as early as possible. Um, and I think the other thing that um, that I really believe in as a as a product manager is uh, the shortest path from the customer's lips to the engineer's ears, uh, and that plus the ability to ship regularly um, makes for a good product. So, the, the, uh, are you the only one who talks to customers, or do you get the engineers to? Uh, no, that's exactly my point, right? So, as many times as I can get out of that path, the happier I am, right? So, I spend a lot of my time. Uh, trying to recruit customers to talk directly to engineers mm -hmm. uh, rather than spend a lot of my time writing things down and you know I don't want to be a dog with a note wrapped, <laughs> you know, tied to his neck. Yeah. So you have a couple of open positions here at Cloudera right now. Can you tell us about them and what you're looking for? Uh, sure. So uh, we're hiring for a user experience designer and we're also hiring for a product manager. Um, the user experience person 
we're looking for someone who is familiar with you know interaction design and UI design. Um, and I think you know this is this is really going to be our first UX hire, and and I think um, we'll play a pretty central role. So the way I've kind of um, described it is is for somebody that maybe they've worked uh, in some other organization as an individual contributor, and they're looking to step up and be a leader and set the uh, the design um, look and feel for all of Cloudera products for the next years. Um, uh, with respect to the product manager, the way I, I describe that is. Um, you know, we're we're looking for the best athlete. So um, I'm not. A, I don't want to look for you know must have five years of storage system experience with data. You know, I'm not trying to um, have somebody lateral in to do the exact same job they already did before. Um, we're looking for someone who is um, focused on uh, the market uh, and the customer and the strategy for a product first. Um, uh, so that they're as, maybe as smart uh, as our as our distinguished engineers, but are not trying to out engineer the mm -hmm. engineers because uh, <laughs> that would be a futile uh, that would be a futile uh, project and impossible. But that's impossible a, that's impossible to do. <laughs> um, uh, so that's that's the kind of folks we're looking for. So you you worked for uh, a big enterprise software company, sure. uh, SEP, proprietary software as well. Yeah. How different it, does it feel to work for an open source company yeah. uh, like us? Yeah, I, I worked for SAP and I worked for BEA Systems before that, so two kind of brand name uh, enterprise software companies. Honestly, uh, the open source is a lot more fun. Um, you know, I think in, in proprietary software, uh, what happens is you, you hunker down, uh, you build something, and then you spend a lot of time selling and marketing to get someone to actually try it, right? So if you look at a normal proprietary software company, uh, out of every dollar of revenue they bring in, they will spend um, 40 cents of that on sales and marketing, three times as much as they spend on product. Uh, so and you wait a long time. So you'll you'll build something and then it's like six months to go sell it and you know have it actually in use. With open source, uh, you can get things out there faster. You can get feedback earlier. So the lag between what we do and uh, when people get to experience the Cloudera hotness is is not very long. Um, the other thing which is fun about it is that. Um, you know, open source tends to show up more with platform technologies, and platforms are all about ecosystems and communities. Um, so from a strategic point of view, uh, it's also a lot more fun, especially as a product guy, I think also for engineering, but, you know, we're, we're, playing, we're playing chess here, we're not playing checkers, and, and uh, you know, there's a lot more levers to pull, and there's a lot more problems, interesting problems and puzzles to solve, and, and you know, that always makes product people happy. Eli, you want to add anything about the open source nature? Of what you do? Yeah. You also worked at VMware, which was proprietary. Yeah. So I mean, we have uh, I mean, we have both people who work on open source uh, and closed source software. So there's kind of a, a you know role in both of our products. Um, you know, it is it is interesting uh, you know to work in an open source environment because you're collaborating with a lot of companies, not just you know internally with Cloudera, but you know uh, plenty of other companies: Yahoo, Facebook, um, Twitter, eBay, all these all these people that uh, you know also um, work on these projects with us. Uh, one of the interesting things is that's allowed us to really grow uh, uh, kind of much faster than you we would have if we had uh, not collaborated with them. So if you know if you look at the types of uh, customers, you know, we have, you know, within 12 months of launching the company, we had people running our, um, you know, our software on hundreds of servers. We now have people running it on thousands of servers. Um, it's really allowed us to kind of scale and tackle problems that companies our size normally don't get a chance to tackle. So. Um, I thought that's that's been one of the interesting uh, experiences for yeah, me. One just one small thing just to add to that. I mean, just as reference, so this co this is uh, not even a two year old company right now, uh, and we have more than fifty paying customers on the backs of less than two salespeople. Uh, there's you can't find a proprietary software startup that's had that kind of experience. I also had one of the some engineers would say the open source nature uh, allows them to share their poetry with the rest yeah. of the world, right? Yeah. So as opposed to working for mm -hmm. a proprietary company, only your peers in the company get to see your codes versus open source. Now everybody gets to see how, how beautiful your code is. Mm -hmm. uh, so another question for you, Eli. Uh, Charles indicated earlier the Cloudera Enterprise and how we have the the Cloudera distribution for Hadoop, which is open source, but then we have Cloudera Enterprise, which mm -hmm. is, has includes that, but also includes some proprietary tools that make it easier uh, to to uh, manage and deploy uh, Hadoop uh, and monitor, etc. How how do you, how does that impact the engineering team? Is the engineering team now split between these kind of things, or uh, speak more about that? Yeah. Um, 
So as, as Charles mentioned earlier, we had kind of organized our teams uh, around products. So in general, we also just believe that small teams uh, work. So we end up doing kind of each each project ends up getting a small team that goes and attacks it. So we don't really, you know, the org chart is not actually something that really uh, is actually sticky and sits there. It's how we happen to structure ourselves for whatever problems we face at the moment. Um, so today, for example, there's one team uh, called the platform team that produces um, all of the, uh, the projects that go into our data analysis uh, um, and storage platform, and then there's another team which is focused on, you know, the applications, uh, kind of the system management and apps and ops that will go into making these clusters more usable uh, to, to real users. And that's a separate team, and they, uh, you know, they have a, um, they work on a proprietary product. So uh, we actually, I mean, we have an open floor plan, and we all sit around each other. So you wouldn't actually be able to visually see necessarily that we're structured into those two teams, but that's that's actually how we're we're structured. Um, it, it actually just made me think that I also remembered a you know answer to your previous question about what's different about open source. One of the interesting things I've noticed in the in the platform team is we since we actually work on the open source projects as well as our uh, distribution of them, we actually do releases very quickly. So the open we release as the open source um, projects make releases. Um, so we're involved both in the open source releases and the releases of our products. So you know from the time we start working on something to the time it's in uh, you know we're getting feedback from the community and it's in users' hands, uh, you know, is often a matter of months, um, which you like you would not see in a traditional um, uh, enterprise company. So that's that's another big difference we see with the with open source. Uh, so Charles, I think this is the last question is for you. Uh, what do you think makes people excited uh, to uh, join and stay at Cloudera? Yeah, you know, I think Eli alluded to it uh, at the beginning. So in part, I'm 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 just going to reiterate. I think that uh, people. People want to work with other bright, driven people. Uh, they want to work on uh, big, challenging problems that are going to have uh, real impact. And uh, they want to be in a winning team. Uh, and uh, I think Cloudera um, you know, uh, manages to offer uh, all three of those things. Okay, thank you, guys. Thanks, Hammer. <laughs>